Hello everyone, this is Ryan Nickel with Rowan with Rowan University's 3D Printing Club, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make a bottle cap. It's going to be a 28 millimeter cap, so it should be able to fit on most bottles. And to start, we're going to go to this create on on shape, and we're going to create a document. I'm going to name this guy Final Cap for myself. But you guys can feel free to name him whatever you want. We're going to load in our workspace. We're going to go to sketch and select front. Uh, I'm gonna, and in order to make that normal to us, we're going to select this cube over here with the word front. And to start, we're going to make a reference point that is horizontal to the origin right here. Actually, we're going to make two reference points. And then we're going to smart dimension them to be as follows. We're going to have one, this guy, be point five by five. And point, this point is going to be point 0.61 distance away from the origin. If it seems like I'm pausing, it's because I'm just checking my notes to ensure that we have um, a standard size for a cap. Because I make these on at work, <laughs> so I need to oblige to such standards. So I'm gonna make a so for both of these points, I'm gonna make a vertical line, and you can tell it's vertical based off that little reference tool as it, that appears. As you can see right now, it's to the right of my line. It's a vertical line so that shows it's straight. Um, and we're gonna dimension these guys. This guy is gonna be 0.44, and this guy is gonna be 0.402. Okay. And now what we want to do is we're gonna make two horizontal lines come out of, of both of these endpoints. But the important note is to don't make them go to the center line yet. Um. We're going to dimension these guys. So the top one is going to be 0.547. And the base guy is going to be 0.438. Okay. We're going to get our line tool. And this this is all optional right now. You, I, I'm going to do it this way because I think it looks more aesthetically pleasing. We're going to go on an angle and then go to the end point, or then go to the end line right there, or the midpoint line. We're going to make another angle from the base one and then go straight to the end line again and then go straight up to connect the two. So you can just, you could have just went straight to the end line and connected them. It's fine. I just find this to look more appealing. Um, we're going to make a reference using this point right here. And I want these two guys to be parallel so that they're of even uh, angles. You guys can make it however you want. Doesn't really matter. I just think it looks better like this. Something like that. You can play around with this all you want. I'm not defining this on purpose. You can tell it's undefined because it's blue. Um, and then with that, we're going to go to our revolve. And we have to first let's sort of pick an axis, which is a mid axis. And then we're going to select faces or regions. And we're going to select our entire sketch. And it's going to revolve it around. So this is, if you have a result similar, something like this. Okay, I'm going to click front so you get a nice side view. And actually, we're going to look down below. And I we're going to use this um, helix tool. And if it doesn't appear right here, it's probably because of one of these four is covering it. Just click the drop down and select helix. So what I want to do is I actually want to go to turns and pitch. So it needs, I need to select a circular edge. I'm going to pick this base edge right here. And I want my revolutions to be 1.125. And I want my pitch to be 0 0.1666. As many sixes as you want. Click check. Oh, as I can see, it's actually inverted. So I'm going to click this right here. And there we go. It's going into the cap, which is what we're looking for. So check. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to do another sketch. And we're going to want to go on the front plane. So as you can see, I selected a front plane right here. I'm going to make it normal to the front plane using the cube on the right. And on, there's a, on, underneath the cube on the right, there's another cube with a drop down. We're going to want to go to section view. It's going to ask you to select a plane. You're going to select the front plane and then check mark. And it's, as you can see, it cut our cap in half, which is what we're looking for because it gives us a better view. And what we're going to need to do is on this right hand side here where the where the helix begins, 
we're going to want to make a, a line that's a little bit away from the base and right against the inside wall. Now we're going to draw a trapezoid, something like this, as I just drew on the screen. So now we're going to need some dimensions, which I have. Um, so the, this point right here is going to need to be approximately 0 0.035 tall. Okay, this whole line right here needs to be a certain. Oops, that was incorrect. I'm supposed to select that origin point. We're going to try that again. Dimension tool. This whole line. And I need to select the origin, and it needs to be approximately 0 0.5055 away. I know this guy to be at an angle of 85 degrees. This guy needs to be at an angle of 45 degrees. And this guy needs to be a length of 0 0.06, oh, 0 0.0265. There we go. And we're done with our sketch. Actually, we don't need, oh uh, yes, we are done with our sketch right there. Okay, now we want to do this. We have to select the sweep tool up here, which is next to the revolve tool. And we're going to need to do add, or select the add tab. And faces and sketch to sweep, which is going to be the sketch we just drew. And then the sweep path is going to be this helix that we put in before. You can click check. You can select them directly on the screen. And you get something that looks like this. Let's get rid of the section view. So select this the cube on the right again. Turn section view off, and you get something that looks like this. And now we need to let the threads lead in and out, is what we call it. So we're going to do sketch, select the face of the of the beginning of the thread down here. Um, we're going to use this convert tool right here. It's called use. It's called use. Let's click on that face. It's going to convert into a sketch for us, which is very useful. And then we're going to click this extrude button right here. And we want to extrude them at 0.23. Okay. And check. And as you can see, as you can see, he has been let out, which is what we're looking for. We're going to do the same exact thing for the top of the thread. Sketch. No, we do not want fun plane. We're going to sketch on this face. Convert the entire face, there we go, extrude, and 0.23 as we did the last one, check, and as you can see those that's our threading so far, and now technically if you stopped right here, your cap would be complete, you can technically use it, but we're going to go a step further and make it a ribbed cap so you have easier uh, grip around it. So we're going to put in some serrations, is what we call it in an industry. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to, need to go to sketch. We're going to select this top face, which is the top of our cap, and we're going to draw a circle using the or from the origin. We can draw on any arbitrary amount, but we're going to have to make it 1.22. So now it's the edge of our circle. I know that because from our revolve, I picked the outside wall di our diameter, so I know what the diameter of the entire cap is. Gonna select circle. Gonna make another one on the inside, and I want him to be 1.17. Okay, that is the distance between the two. Now I need to make a triangle. From this center, from the center, from the center line starting at the inner circle to connect to the outer circle, you can tell that it's connected because it turns red. And we need to make another line from that point to this out, outskirt. Okay, I and I need this smart dimension tool. I need an angle between these two to be 60 degrees. And it looks wonky right now, but we're going to use this relation again. And we're going to say equal. And we want these two lines to be of equal length. Okay. 
That's what we're looking for. And now, there's technically two ways to do this, but I'm going to show you the way I find the easiest. Is we're going to use circular pattern, and we're going to use the control or the shift key to select both of these pieces. Hold the shift as you click both lines, and we want this to be 134. Then just click the the left tab of your mouse, and it should clone them 100 or clone that 134 times. So now they're all connected. And what we need to do is we're going to click the extrude, or we're going to click the extrude button, and we want we have to go to the remove tab. And as you can see, it automatically selected what we were doing. But if you want to do it again, to be sure, we would have to select every single piece again, which I am not going to bore you guys with. So luckily, it automatically did it, or they recognized it the first time. So we're going to go back into the sketch by right clicking, clicking edit. We're going to go to extrude again, remove. As you can see, it's giving us a preview, but saying it's going down one inch. I want it to go down 0.4 inches, as it gives us a little bit of a base, which is nice. Check, and there we go. There's our cap so far. Um, it would be smart if you go, or I'm not going to bore you guys with the detail, but if you use the fillet tool right here, you selected every edge of the triangle, or every point of the triangle, right? And you made it, you know, that's at the point zero one. If I made it, it still it goes kind of deep. Let's try the point zero zero five, right? It makes it smooth. Unfortunately, you would have to go around to select every edge of a, or every you know line of one hundred and thirty four. So you got if you guys want to, it's definitely smart because it does it makes your edges less sharp. But for our purposes, I'm not going to show you that. Because it's very repetitive, and also our printers most likely will not be able to get such detail where it will actually get sharp and harm you. Um, you can also be smart to fill it the lines here and here on the on the threading. Not necess not necessarily necessary for us, but in industry that's just that is the pra common practice. Um, if you want a personal selecting these planes and you select open space. Now if you want to personalize this a little bit, if you go to sketch and you select the top plane and we're going to go to top view, you can see where are you? You can put your name or essentially anything you want on here. So if I say Ryan's yeah. But I wanted to look at that, check, and now it include text. And you know, I can play with it a little bit. There we go. That looks nice. And this is completely optional. You're able you can either extrude outwards, so it'll look like this a little bit. Well, I would not advise it goes that out, maybe point zero zero one. <laughs> you can either do that. Or just do point zero one perhaps, or you can make it an etching and remove a little bit of material to make it. There we go. Must have made a mistake somewhere. Oh, because he's etching outwards. We need to make it sure it goes inwards. There we go. Or you can do an etching inside. Both both would work fine. Um, and that is mostly it for the cap. Like I said, filleting is a big thing. Go around, fill at the edges, stuff like that. You can fill at this inside if you want as well. And the base down here if you wish. Um, when you want to go, if you want to, us to print this for you, if you go down the part studio down here and export, Make sure STL and make sure it's in millimeters. If not, we're going to get issues. So, 
Okay, well, beyond that, thank you guys for watching.